18th. So that puts us at day 71 of the lockdown in the U.S. and day 66 here. Listen, I want to jump right into a short video, but before I do, uh, it seems to me all through history, going back even to World War II and what have you, even prior, uh, Sweden's always maintained a very open-minded approach. And I've often wondered why, and evidently it's brought up into this video. But first, I want to take you to a bit of a blast from the past from a company everybody knows called IKEA. And pay attention to their slogan. It's a 30-second uh, commercial from back in 1989. At IKEA, you can save so much on dining room chairs, you won't have to wait for a table. IKEA, Swedish for common sense. At IKEA, we set high standards for our high chairs. They have to be portable, affordable, and designed so your little one can eat at the table just like a grown-up. IKEA, Swedish for common sense. Okay, common sense, that's the point of reason why. Um, listen to this young woman also. Um, I like these boots on the ground videos and it's what's happening over in Sweden. And I just thought that uh, perhaps you'd know, it looks like Sweden might be the only country in all of Europe that weathers this financial Armageddon that's been purposely uh, infiltrated on us other bright people. Have a listen, she makes a lot of common sense. Something that's not all that common anymore. Depending on where in the world you are, some of the footage that I'm about to show you in this video might shock you or even disturb you, but I just wanted to share some real life footage of the situation in Sweden, in Stockholm in particular, right now. And for those of you who don't know, I live in Sweden. I have lived here for basically my entire life, except for two ish years when I lived in the US. And I do want to say that I'm not fully engaged in everything that's happening right now. I decided a while back not to dive too deep into the news because I think doing that comes with more negatives than positives. So I only keep myself informed on what I need to know in order to keep myself and those around me as safe as possible and not to add any stress to the healthcare. And also, since the situation is constantly changing and being monitored, everything that I'll be talking about is how the situation is today. You know, tomorrow might look different. So there has been no lockdown in Sweden. Most places have remained open and there's been tons of footage showing the streets here in Stockholm where people are walking around in crowds, eating out, taking the train, hanging out with friends and by the looks of it, kind of living on as usual. And ever since the very beginning of the pandemic, Sweden has been criticized by other countries for its approach of tackling the virus, which has looked very different from most other countries. And there has been headlines such as, is Sweden's controversial approach working? And is Sweden's lack of coronavirus lockdown a fatal mistake? And in the beginning, most of the criticism and headlines were negative, calling the approach lazy. But now I've seen that there's been a change for some who are starting to, I guess, see the possibility that maybe the approach is being effective. Um, there's also been a lot of memes, but so yeah, what's going on really in Sweden? So there's definitely been more recommendations from the authorities as opposed to restrictions, although there has been some restrictions such as you're not allowed to be in crowds of more than 50 people. But I guess the attitude has been more like, we recommend that you don't throw a dinner party with your friends, but we can't stop you would you choose to do that. So technically most people could live on more or less as usual. Would they choose to? With some restrictions, of course, but a lot of people, myself included, choose not to. And when I say that, I'm not taking into consideration those who have lost their jobs or worse, who of course cannot live on as usual, but I'm more referring to the possibility of going out and going places and so on since a lot of places do remain open. Like technically, I could still go to the gym, go to my favorite restaurants and hang out with friends, but even though a lot of these places are open, many of them do still have certain rules to ensure distance is being held. But I wouldn't be able to 
for example, go to my local library um, since it's been closed now. And I also wouldn't be able to go to certain museums. Now, those are obviously not necessary places to go to, but I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. So, why is the situation in Sweden like this? Why are Swedes seemingly living on as usual instead of staying at home? Well, generally speaking, in Sweden, the people have quite a bit of trust in the authorities, and the authorities have quite a bit of trust in the people. As the state epidemiologist said, the Swedish strategy is mainly based on voluntary cooperation and individual responsibility. Also in Sweden, pandemic or not, people kind of naturally keep their distance from each other. You know, more than half of all Swedish homes are made up of one resident, which is the highest proportion in Europe. So it's not like in many other countries where it's normal for a lot of people to live together and to have roommates and so on. We are a bit isolated um, by nature. So yeah, pandemic or not, people aren't really up in your space, so to speak. Now, what does it really look like when you go out for a stroll in the midst of a pandemic here in Stockholm? So I do go out on walks every day and so does a lot of other people. And if you're going to go out, especially if you live in the city, fully avoiding everyone is pretty much impossible. You know, unless you take a drive out to the forest somewhere, which I actually did a few weeks ago. And you know, actually even then, we still were not completely alone. So yeah, there's people everywhere. And in my experience, at least so far, I'd say most people are being respectful and do keep their distance, but some people do not. So being alert is definitely a must, unless you want to be walking side by side with strangers, because you definitely can't count on everyone cooperating and distancing themselves, you know, even though a lot of people do. As for my thoughts on how Sweden is handling this, like I said, I'm not keeping up with everything and I'm definitely no expert, but I'm shocked at how so many people choose to live on as usual, you know, hanging out with their friends, going out to the club and so on, and how people use the argument life must go on with no consideration to the elderly, the vulnerable and the healthcare. And I think that regardless of formal restrictions or not, the least we can do is sacrifice at least part of our everyday lives for the sake of those I just mentioned. You know, it's definitely disturbing to see how on one hand, healthcare workers are working so hard and making so many sacrifices. And then on the other hand, some people can't even sacrifice seeing their friends for beers. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts on the situation. I know that whenever I post being outdoors on my Instagram, I always get messages from people who have been home for weeks and who aren't allowed to go out. So please share what your situation looks like. Thank you for watching and keep safe and I'll see you soon. All right, well, um, <clears throat> a lot of good points to take away from that. I'm not gonna dwell on it too long though, but really, one of the most important things to remember is common sense. Um, these folks didn't completely destroy their economy. All the information we're getting out from our various economic blog sites are telling us they're going to be the one that survives, if anybody, and they're actually gonna be doing okay. They did not, uh, did, again, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna repeat myself on that again, too. There's no real difference in any of the stats between countries or nations that have closed and made a mandatory lockdown versus those that did not. Uh, I did suggest that uh, people who are following us maybe take a look. You'll find Japan, you'll find, I mean, excuse at Japan, Tokyo. I mean, many places did not have mandatory lockdowns, and you'll see. We feel strongly this should be optional. We're not saying don't take a vaccine. We're not saying take a vaccine because, again, it goes back to the universal laws. It's, it's your body. So you have every right to do what you think is best for your body. You're not hurting anybody else. Um, Sweden's approach all through 
their short-term history, and when I say short-term about the term of the century, remember, evolutionary histories, I mean, a few hundred years is like a coffee break. But anyway, they've always maintained a pretty much open trust pattern between their government and their citizens. I reminded us, uh, I reminded uh, everybody who watches me, uh, the important fact that the frequency of your citizenry and the freedom you have is directly linked to the citizenry of that particular nation. So if you're rapidly uh, losing freedoms, take a look at the frequency that the citizenry is operating at. Chances are you're going to find it's rather low. Um, <clears throat> Anybody in closing, because I'm going to keep it short, anybody who wants to take any vaccine after the fact that if they've done any research, okay, if you rely on what you're being told to do, you're nothing more than being led. You're a sheep, okay? And it's not an insult. It's a fact. So don't take a fact and convert it into an insult. That doesn't work very well. I, I don't fall for that. That's being done on your local news a lot lately. And I don't fall for that because that's a defense ploy. I know it well, and I use it well. <laughs> anyway, you should be free to take the vaccine, but I would encourage anybody upon closing this video, like I say, who would look at the facts of um, autism, take a look at the facts of asthma, Take a look at Alzheimer's. Take a look at all of these prevalent diseases we're fighting now. Take a look at the percentage of them. Leave your fear out of it as hard as it may be and go before. Okay? Just went off the top of my head because we do this kind of research, and I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You're doing this to your own children. If you want to be ignorant, do it to yourself, but at least do the research if you have children. One out of five right now is born with asthma in America. Okay. I believe it's one out of seven now with autism. Now take a look before autism. I'm currently reading uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits' uh, recent release. It's a bestseller already. And uh, the amount of information that I, I knew about, you know, uh, some of the uh, blackballing and the dirty tricks and everything, but I, did, I was not aware to the extent of the human carnage that these people, that, that you trust them for this vaccine. Yet yeah, Tony, Anthony Fauci, Tony Fauci, as she calls him, his right-hand assistant, okay, Millions of people died while they were arguing over who gets the patent rights to what was already a botched AIDS vaccine because they were using animal tissue to make the vaccine, not human tissue. And it introduced a whole bunch of different problems. For over two months, I found out in this book, while one point, I think it was 1.2 or 1.3 million Africans died while they were arguing over who gets royalty rights on this. You want to put that stuff in your body? You have all the permission. Remember, it's your body. Do not force it on anybody else. So there's going to be a war that this world has never seen because people will not put up with that. They know they're giving themselves cancer, disease, muscle problems, respiratory problems. They know it and they will not put up with it, okay? Till next time, this is Barry and DR. Until we get back to work, we'll do our best to keep this coming to you. Bye.